Hello, and welcome back to Claire's World. I am Claire Nicarico, and today I'd like to speak about some of the misconceptions that are spread in the New Age culture that we're living through and that many of us have grown up with and how those might be the serving us. So before we move forward, I'd like to ask you to please like, share, and comment on this video. And also please subscribe to my channel. That really helps me make more videos and I truly appreciate it. But absolutely, please leave a comment. I would always love to hear what you guys think about this information. So without further ado, what I am finding myself uh, thinking about these days is that a lot of information that I access out there, it might just be the people that I am accessing, is misleading in some ways. Not all of it. This is not to say nobody else out there or that I hold the ultimate truth or other people don't. This is not about that at all. I find it wonderful. There are so many spreading the light out there and talking about spirituality, true spirituality. So this is how I find myself here as well. I have read about these things and watched videos about these things for a long time. So there are people out there who are really doing an amazing job. I'm speaking about some of the common concepts that we see used and repeated over and over in the new age community. And also some of the people that are part of this new age community that might very well be infiltrated. And when I say infiltrated, again, if we consider that there is a, a light team and a dark team, this new spirituality, this new age spirituality was created as a way to channel us into a certain direction so we wouldn't actually find out the truth. So a lot of this new age stuff is actually meant to keep us down and to slow down, if not altogether stop our growth and the increase in our awareness of who we really are and what's really happening. So some of it is being repeated. Some of this, this information is being repeated out of ignorance. You know, we all have our own limitations. I certainly have mine and I'm not here trying to say that I am perfect, uh, but some is being spread because there is an agenda behind it. So here's what a, a kind of uh, rule I made for myself where I watch certain things and right away, something is not right, does not sit right with me. And I wanted to share this with you in case it resonates. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't, that's perfectly fine. But this is what I watch out for because we cannot always know the intention of the person sitting in the other end. They might tell you that they're love and light all day long, but that might not necessarily be the case. Actually, love and light. Let's talk about that for a moment. <laughs> this idea that we have to be love and light to be raising our consciousness or to be worthy people or people of the light. Okay, that is actually number one issue I have with this whole new age thing. We are on a 3D planet. Being love and light, what does that even mean? First of all, we destroy just by being here, whether it's, uh, it's a cycle of life, right? So we destroy life. Uh, if you're a meat eater, for example, it is, you're destroying life, but you don't even, we don't even have to go that far. If you eat salads, you're destroying life, all right? So we can't just all be love and light. So let's assume they're talking about how we deal with other people. So now it's a very narrow concept. All of a sudden, we're not all love and light anymore. We're just love and light when it comes to our neighbors and the rest of the world. And we try to send good vibes to everybody, which is wonderful. I definitely highly recommend because our thoughts create reality that we do send good vibes to everyone and send light to everybody. But this seems to me also an easy way to manipulate us to where instead of reacting and standing up for ourselves when we see an injustice done, instead of calling it out, then we're just sending light. Now, light is very, very powerful if we know what we're doing. But a lot of us are carrying so much trauma, so much programming, and, and the, the, <laughs> this dimension is so dense that we are not able to necessarily change things, especially individually. 
in that way. So as a collective, we can do meditations, we can send light to many aspects of what's happening on earth. That's wonderful. I love it. It does make a difference. I and mean, this is even proven scientifically that meditation, collective meditation makes a difference. Individual meditation also does make a difference. So that's fine. But the idea that we have to be love and light all the time, I think is a ruse. I think it's a way to hold us down because we have every right to be righteously upset, angry, sad, whatever it is. In fact, if you see some of my previous videos where I talk about new earth, we're not going to a new earth that is love and light either. We're going to a new earth where simply, instead of isolating negative, the darkness, dark frequencies, and assigning them to someone else outside of us so we can say, oh, that guy is bad. I'm good, but that guy is bad. We finally deal with the fact that we all have darkness inside of ourselves and we study it and we accept it. We don't isolate it anymore. This is what has caused darkness to become such a huge problem on this planet. It's because we don't want to look at it and recognize that it's inside of us. It's part of who we are. It doesn't have to be the ugly darkness that we see manifested out there with some of the violence, some, the corruption, the greed, but we all have these tendencies. And until we recognize this, until we stop pretending that we're supposed to be some kind of saints, this is never gonna end. We have to accept ourselves the way we are. So this love and light business is very, very fishy <laughs> for me, uh, which again is not to say that we shouldn't be creatures of the light and add our high energy to situations where we encounter them. But it doesn't mean become a pushover and a doormat and let other people do whatever you want. I mean, we're seeing it right now. I have ultimate respect for the people who are basically raising going on the streets and speaking their mind. This is about time. This is actually overdue. And it's wonderful. And it doesn't mean that they are not love and light in other areas of their life. It doesn't mean that these people are just not that spiritual. It just means that they are standing up for what is right. So that was the first thing I meant to say since it came up. And it always comes up when we talk about uh, a new age because, my goodness, it, it comes up all the time. I'm sure you've heard it a million times as well as I have. Okay, here's another thing. And I, and I have a list here, a couple of things I don't want to forget. The other thing is the fact that we are being told by a lot of the new age um, representatives or gurus, whatever you want to call them, they're out there on the internet that there are people coming to save us, that the aliens have been working behind the scenes to save us, and that, for example, there are mad beds waiting, all this technology, all this technology is there to save us. It's amazing how we learn nothing from our own history. Technology is not good. <laughs> not good in the way we think is good. And the greatest technology lies inside of us. We are the greatest technology in the universe. We are more powerful than any technology that's ever been, that will ever be invented. That's another story. So the idea that somebody's saving us behind the scenes, et cetera, what this is doing is, is allowing people who really don't want to take responsibility for their lives, people who have, still live with a savior concept to believe there's, they don't have to do anything. They don't have to change anything because somebody's coming to save us. Uh, for people that believe in 3D, maybe a politician or the white hats, whatever it is. And for people who want to think of themselves as being spiritual without really doing the work is that the Pleiadians are coming to save us. Now, again, this does not mean the Pleiadians are not helping. This is not to say that some good politicians might not help. This is not to say that the White Hats don't exist. So I'm not saying any of that. That's totally fine to me if those things are real, okay? I have no way of knowing. So I'm, I'm giving the benefit of the doubt to this situation and then we'll see. What I do know is that none of this is going to help unless we change, unless we finally stand up for ourselves the entire idea of the Great Awakening was some people call, you know, the rising consciousness. And I just did a video about the difference between consciousness and awareness. It's really the rise of in awareness. But let's call it the rising consciousness. That's how most people out there think of it. 
the, the rising consciousness on this earth of humanity, et cetera, has to do with the fact that we are coming of age, we are growing up, we're actually becoming adults and stop, we're stopping behaviors that are very childish, where we expect mommy and daddy to take care of us, replace those words with the government or the priest, whatever it is that whoever you rely on to tell you what to do, we are supposed to grow out of this. And we are, we are collectively, more and more people are realizing that it's a very, very bad idea to let our people tell you what to do for the simple reason that you don't know what their agenda is. You are assuming that they care for you. You are assuming that they'll do, even if they do care for you, they'll do the right thing. But you really have no way to know and to verify oftentimes. I can tell you for a fact that no one will ever care about your life more than you do. Nobody. It's just impossible. You are the one who's supposed to care about your life the most. The second that you pull yourself back and say, oh, somebody else take care of me, you basically get which, uh, whatever, whatever is available, which is not necessarily going to be the optimal solution for you. So it's a very uh, important concept, I believe because the savior complex hides behind so many different ways. A lot of people, again, think of themselves as being spiritual. They stop their growth by saying, oh, we have this, uh, we have this army, whatever, galactic federation of light, interstellar, just so many things. I can't even keep up with them. And therefore we're good. This is happening. They're coming to get us. I've even been told by 25th that some people will be removed from here by ships in a good way. I don't mean removed, forcefully removed, uh, but that doesn't mean they're saving us. It means we have done the work, we are doing the work, and they are helping, just like we help each other as humans. It, again, it doesn't mean they're better than us or they're the ultimate solution. The question is what's actually happening behind the scenes. And what's happening behind the scenes is that we are taking this down. We are the ones who have, we're doing the work here. So since we're talking about the Galactic Federation, we will flow right into the, my next point. I become suspicious every time I hear someone use titles when they talk about entities or higher consciousness beings. Titles like commander of the interstellar, what not, I, I, I don't know, uh, or, or queen of whatever, or the king of, I don't know this for a fact, but it sounds to me like this is a way to give authority to the message of the person bringing the message. Because if I had to guess, if these people are truly, and, and I mean these outsiders that are being channeled supposedly, are truly high consciousness, why do they have the same hierarchies we have on a 3D planet? Even on this 3D planet, when you think about royals, unless you're in the tabloids or whatnot, I, I personally am not. I doubt that you would be as well because you're watching this. What are the royals? On what basis do they hold the power they have? I haven't given it to them. I really couldn't care less. There are people just like us. What they do is they have a title in money, money that to take from other people, money they have taken from other people. Royals in those positions, there are people that, that simply through <laughs> manipulation and the control and wars have gotten power. This is something that, I mean, we are rewarded clearly, but is this something that we should be rewarding? Are these people better than us? I think there are so many great people on this planet who do normal jobs, who are normal people who may be volunteering at shelters on the weekend, or may just be bringing soup to their neighbor when they know the neighbor is, is sick. It doesn't have to be anything amazing. Or maybe they give uh, gifts to children in need or whatever that might be, whatever that looks like for you. These are people who are worthy of admiration and respect. Not people that would be told to admire because they happen to show up on colored magazines that are paid to make money from selling copies. We must 
use our discernment in relation to many, many things, but in particular to where we pay our attention because our attention brings energy. So we are now giving our energy, which is our power to these people who not only never earned it, never did anything to deserve this, but they often use this power against us. The more power we give away, the weaker we become, the stronger they become. Let's just assume even for a second that these are good people. They just happen to be in these situations, good for them. It's like winning the lottery, great. But you are making yourself weaker by going outside of yourself and thinking that anyone, I don't care if it's on this planet or another planet, is better than you. There is a reason you are having this experience here. You are not a 3D person. You are a multidimensional being living in a 3D body right now. You're not even living here all the time. So even to say that you are human is not even true because half the time, probably three quarters of the day, you're somewhere else. Between the night and all the times that you travel during the day, you're really more of a multidimensional being than you are a human. There are no humans. We just, we as energy beings, chose this lifetime to be here. We may have chosen the last 20 lifetimes to be here, a thousand lifetimes to be here. We're still not human. You can incarnate on any, you can embody on any planet at any point. You don't even have to embody. It is still you. We've been given so much of this information. And one of the layers to this puzzle, which started with religion, is that when they started losing people from religion, they had to create another cage for us to walk into, which was this new age spirituality. I'm not saying all of it is that. I'm not, because a lot of us have gone through and grown through that to get to the point where we realize what's really going on and how that also is being manipulated. But at the same time, just like not everything in religion is bad, it would be, it would be wrong of me to even say that everything is bad about religion. However, the point was always to channel people, to keep them limited in some ways. And the same thing has happened with new age spirituality. It's a way to give you answers so you don't look for the answers inside yourself. So that you believe that other people have the ability to channel and to connect and you don't. You do. I'm here to tell you that you do. You're just like these people. No, you might be lazy. You might, uh, no judgment there. I've been lazy for a long time. You might decide that I don't, know, I don't want to meditate. I don't want to connect. I don't want to raise my consciousness. I don't want to eat better. Whatever you think it takes for you to be able to do this. And, uh, you know, I know I've made lots of excuses for myself. The fact is we're already connected. And the second that we realize that connection in there and start listening and start paying attention, that happens very quickly. And especially right now that the veil is thinning, things are moving very, very quickly to where many of us can very easily connect and get answers. So try it. You'll be surprised. It won't take you that long. It really doesn't. I uh, had stopped meditating for a while while this disaster, this chaos has happened over the last 18 months because um, I was meditating before and then I stopped. And the reason I stopped is because I was all taken with knowing what was going on. So I spent a lot of time doing that. And I just refused to meditate. And I think I refused to meditate because I really didn't want to know what was behind us. Because really, at, at, in, in my heart, I did already know. So I didn't want to acknowledge it. Again, awareness, I didn't want to be aware of it. But at the same time, the second that I started meditating again a few weeks ago, I immediately, now I get all the information. I get all kinds of information that I would have never gotten before. And that uh, is very similar to what I get when I am under hypnosis. I connected the 25th. I just did a video about the difference between consciousness and awareness. Then I got all that information from meditation. The veil is spinning. Use it to your advantage. The energy is quickening. We basically are now already stretching our legs and testing our legs, uh, playing with the energy that we are going to have access to when we go to higher dimensional planets. Not all of us are going to New Earth. Oh, and that's another thing. They're telling us we are collectively moving on to New Earth. Okay, they tell us New Earth is 5D, it's really 7D, but that's fine. They think that because this is 3D, we're going to the next uh, physical uh, embodiment dimension, which is 5D, because 4D is a state of consciousness. 
uh, and therefore it makes sense to say 5D, actually New Earth is 7D. But the uh, but the they tell us all these things. Like for example, they tell us that to go to New Earth, you have to be 5D. You don't. You just have to be 4D and above because then when you're on a 7D planet and the collective is working together, we raise our awareness, quote unquote, consciousness, very very quickly all together. So you don't need to be uh, you don't need to be 5D. So I think 5D, the concept of 5D is also related to the fact that because you're on a 5D planet. Well, guess what? We're here on a 3D planet and there are people that are in 6D, if not above, right here, as they live right here. And there are people that, my goodness, I, I don't know where they are. I don't even know that they are 3D necessarily. That's, uh, that's how, uh, how lacking in awareness they are and how they want to live. So uh, this concept of dimensions would be told and levels of consciousness that are so black and white and that is so, uh, so strict, so structured, again, it smells to me on the way that we think on this planet. And this is what I would suggest as a way of knowing, of discerning if someone is getting information from the right source or if they think they are, but they're not really tapping in properly or whatever might be, or they might on purpose be giving the wrong information because unfortunately there's a lot of that as well. Is that, uh, does it sound like uh, more 3D? Does it sound like it's just the next level up from 3D? Does it sound like stuff that we would come up with in 3D if we just, wanted to twist uh, and change a little thing here and there. If it sounds like a continuation of what we have here, this is new, not new earth, and it's definitely not a high level connection. Because I know when I connected with, with the 25th, they were saying things that I even disagreed with from my 3D perspective. Like for example, when they told me, uh, I asked how many light workers are on this planet at this time, and I was hoping to hear millions, because I thought, because again, in, in the new age, uh, Spirituality, they tell us that basic light workers are people who are spreading the light. And that, um, and so if you're, if you're a good person, you're a light worker. And that's fine if we talk about it in English, but that's not the, the point. The point is they're trying to tell us we're all light workers so we all feel better, which is great. But that's not, that's not reality. What, what I was told when I asked, I was told that there's only 12,000 light workers here release the one under 44,000 because each light worker can embody 12, up to 12 uh, bodies at the same time, but it can energize up to 12 bodies at the same time to reach this light worker's goal, uh, basically creates his own team. I call it a soccer team. <laughs> the, uh, but it's not, uh, that was my limitation. I thought the more the merrier. And they said, and I, so I was fighting them when they told me that. I said, why only 12,000? I'm like freaking out. And they're like, that's all that's needed. So this plan we are seeing through here, taking this down, going to a different planet, a new earth for us. Not everybody's going there, but everybody's going to be happy where they're going. Again, as a reminder. It's not a half-hatched plan. This is something we've been working on for a long time. We are getting it done. Everything is going according to plan. The system has to collapse. We're seeing a collapse. We've been seeing a coll uh, collapse for the last two years. That's why they've had to tighten the screw, uh, which even from a 3D perspective, if you're a student of history, you'll see every time the people complain about something rise up in some way, governments tighten the screw. And so people rise up even more. The government tightens the screw some more because they don't have any other tools. They, they don't know what else to do. And then eventually the people, the screw is too tight, something breaks and the people topple the government. The difference this time is that it, they will not be, these governments will not be replaced because a lot of people will finally learn the lesson. You cannot trust people just because they're wearing a badge or they're telling you a title or they're telling you a X, Y, Z. At the end of the day, you're going to want to have control over every aspect of your life because you cannot trust that other people will take care of you the way that you would. And, it, and also, it's your responsibility anyway. We are done skirting responsibility. And uh, the big responsibility, the debacle will come up this year as many people will realize they've taken this poison in their bodies and uh, they're going to have to deal with the fear of what could happen. These are the people who have survived because many have already 
suffer from this. Uh, they will have to deal with this. And it's a matter of responsibility. Where were you when the information was being spread? Where were you? Did you do your research? Even the government told you this was an experiment. So you want to behave like a guinea pig, but you don't want to take the responsibilities of that. The guinea pigs don't even have a choice. They are trapped and they put there. Are you people had a choice to do this or not? That's a whole different story. So I wanted to put this out there because there is a lot of, again, a, a lot of uh, fake spirituality out there that's kept to hold us down. I know many of you are very discerning, but in case sometimes you are wondering, because I've been following people that I thought were great, and then they started saying these things, and I'm listening for these words. The commander, or right? this is happening, these important people are taking care of these things, or, or we're coming, they're coming, hang in there, they're coming to save us. I'm like, who's going to take down these governments? Is it going to be the aliens? If this was the case, they could have done it a long time ago. So they tell us on one end that they can't intervene, but now they're intervening. They're not taking down these governments. We are collapsing everything because it's time. So I want you to know how powerful you are. And we don't need to listen to these people telling us to hope for something you know, that's outside of us. We have all the power. We have access to all the power of the universe inside of us. Always go inside, check with yourself if the stuff sounds weird to you. If there's something off, it's not right. And it's definitely not for you. All right. It was good talking with you guys. And I'll see you again soon. Take care and bye-bye.